Hey everybody, welcome back, or if this is your first time joining us, welcome. My name is Tim, and on this channel we talk about Ableton a lot from a guitar perspective, but as we're getting into this topic, which is drums, it sort of opens up to everyone. So today we're starting with drum rack. There are lots of different ways to get drums into Ableton. Um, the best, of course, being a live drummer. You know, depending on your living circumstances, the time of day, and your access to a drummer, um, that gets to be a little difficult. Um, luckily, we have drum rack. So drum rack is one of those things that's pretty simple until it's not. There's a curve on it where things can get very complex very quickly. Today we're just going to be focusing on the basics of it, um, although I'm going to show you some tricks and hacks that are going to make you sound a lot better uh, if you're not the world's greatest drum programmer or finger drummer like me. So let's take a look at what we got here. So today I'm using my old Launchpad Pro. Um, I actually always like these things. The pads feel really nice. Um, if you don't have a MIDI controller, that's okay. I'm going to show you how you can input your drums in just using your computer keyboard. Okay, so we're in session view right now. Um, I've preloaded a couple of things in here, namely this sample. We're going to be working with this guitar loop. Check it out. Yeah, kind of a lo-fi-ish vibe to it. Um, I figure that's probably a good way of introducing drum rack, considering that we can use sort of boom bappy beats, which I think will illustrate how drum rack works without overtaxing my terrible finger drumming abilities. The first thing I've done is loaded up this 909 kit. So you'll find your drums in this section under the aptly titled drums. Now, not all of them are going to be your cup of tea. Um, and that's okay, because we're going to look at how you can do custom drum racks shortly. So if I want a drum set, let's say let's take this 808. All I need to do is literally drag it over. And I now have an 808 kit ready to go. That said, I'm going to delete this and we're going to stick with our 909. So you'll see a number of presets that we can use down here. I'm just going to set this to lo-fi and turn my chain off. We'll get into how you build those chains out later on. That's sort of a more of an advanced function. So if I hit arm record down here, and let's monitor that, um, you'll see that we now have drums. So the grid pattern here is very much based off of the MPC style um, 16 pads. Um, Generally, the way it will work is that your kick drum will always be this first one. Your snare will always be the third one. Above it, you'll find a hi-hat. And above that, you'll find a open hat. So. Right. Um, these are set to general drum MIDI, I believe it's called. Um, so that first kick is always set to C1 on a piano keyboard. So this will always be C. C sharp, D, D sharp, and on and on it goes. The reason that is is so we can take MIDI from say MIDI packs and um, put them into our drum racks and everything will still correspond. Okay, so if you don't have a MIDI keyboard or you don't have a pad controller, you can also use your computer keyboard. Simply come up here and make sure that this button is clicked. And now your A through L keys on your keyboard are the keys of a piano. All right, so let's record some drums in now. Um, to do so, we're gonna come up to an empty clip slot and double click. So that's created an empty clip that's four bars long. Let's extend that out to two. So now we have an eight bar loop. We can turn on our metronome, hit play here, and then hit this button, this session record button. And that acts as sort of a MIDI record slash overdub thing where I can lay down, say, the kick first, and then I can come back and add in the snare. That way I'm not jumbling all over the place trying to do everything live. Okay, like a big dummy. I forgot to talk about quantization while we we're in here. So this is our original drum groove, right? The one that we sort of tapped in. And it can use some time. What I can do is just highlight it all. Right click, hit quantize settings, 
Um, I'm going to leave it on eighth and eighth note triplets. Um, I'm going to kick that up to, uh, let's give it like 97 and apply that. Yep, and now everything's in time, which is obviously a very important thing when it comes to drums. I'm not a rhythmic genius, I'll admit. Um, but one of the other things that we can do is move into this grooves panel down here and apply that on. In the grooves panel, we have a number of grooves that you can apply to any audio or MIDI. Um, you can sort of preview them by listening to them as such. So I'm going to take this hip hop late eighths. I'm going to drop this onto our clip. And now it appears in our groove pole. It also is in the clip um, overview section here. You can see I can either do none and we just have our normal thing, our normal groove. Or if I add this on, let's turn that down to eighth notes, turn to quantize, see what happens. Okay, so our normal, straight, and with a little groove on it. Almost makes it sound like I know what I'm doing. So we can also use pre-made MIDI clips. Um, I do tend to like using them a little bit more than samples, um, only because you have a little more control and flexibility over them. Um, so for example, let's take a professional drummer's MIDI track and apply it to this, and instead use this and see how this sounds. It's definitely got more of that groove and lope feel to it. Although on these 909s, it sounds a little cheesy. So, so let's also take a look at building custom drum racks. So in order to do that, all we need to do is come over to this drums tab again, pull out drum rack, and we have an empty drum rack that we can fill up with one shots and samples. So I've already done a little bit of it here uh, where I put in a kick, let's arm record this, oops. Right, and these are just samples. Um, I think these are cymatic samples. Indeed, they are. I'll link you below to their website. There's tons of one shots that you can download for free from them um, if you're into that sort of lo-fi sound. Now, some people might think of using MIDI as cheating. Um, it's not in as much as using samples is not cheating. Um, that said, you probably do want to add some stuff into it, make it your own. It's kind of why I like using MIDI over straight samples is that you have the ability to edit afterwards. So my hats are terrible, right? Um, our professional drummer's hats are very good. So what I can do is simply come into this clip, I'm gonna keep his hats, and I'm gonna wipe everything else. Now, I'm gonna come back into that eight bar loop that we did earlier, I'm gonna copy this, I'm going to paste it into here. And now I have the best of both worlds. Actually, since this was a 16 bar loop, what I can do here is take this loop bracket, simply move this back, and now, not bad. Now that said, one of the things I noticed is that these rim shots got very loud all of a sudden. One of the things that you want to play around with is velocity. And I can do that by simply highlighting these guys. You see down here, I've got these velocity knobs. That controls how hard your hits are. So let's turn these down so it's a little more subtle. So a good tip is to vary your velocities a little bit. No drummer actually hits at the same velocity every single time. So if you come in and just kind of randomize these a little bit. So another great thing about using drum racks is the fact that it's basically just a sampler. Um, so each one of these is an audio sample. So I can do audio things to them. For example, on this rim shot, um, I can click this filter button and take down the frequency of it. Let's listen to it live. I can increase its volume. I can even transfer. 
transpose it down. You have access to everything in your audio effects. So we know that I like to put ridiculous um, delays on things to show it off. Take this digital pong and add that over here. And now when we play it, wacky. Sorry, as a guitar player, I love pedals. So this is just an endless playground for me to mess around with weird stuff. Okay, so just as a quick note, you can do all of this in arrangement mode, obviously, as well. Um, here's our original loop. I've created a loop bracket around it, so it's just going to keep playing endlessly. Um, the trick is that you're going to want to hit this button, this plus button, for uh, MIDI overdubbing. Um, so let's give that a shot real quick. I'm going to start playing here. Record. So with this button on, so with that button on, I can add in my hat, right? But watch what happens if I have this off and we go back to our regular button. I hit record. It starts wiping everything. So definitely if you're in arrangement mode, you want to use the MIDI arrangement overdub mode. Okay, so that wraps up our introductory look at drum rack. Uh, if anything wasn't clear, or if you guys have any questions, please do ask in the comments. And of course, as always, if you got something out of this or you enjoyed the video, please do hit the like and subscribe button. Um, we'll be back next time with a look at samples uh, and then possibly start moving into some VST stuff as well for drums and for guitars. And with that, we'll see you next time.